Ten years ago, uh, there was a shocking moment that happened between the Colorado Avalanche and the Vancouver Canucks, of course, talking about Todd Bertuzzi and uh, Steve Moore. Uh, call it a sucker punch, what you will. Uh, a lot has come out of this. Uh, new regulations uh, in terms of how everything's conducted. Uh, but off the ice, uh, civilly, uh, Steve Moore has felt that his years as a hockey player were diminished. Um, took Bertuzzi to trial and uh, they've reached a out-of-court settlement. So, uh, gentlemen, do you feel that it should have gone this far? Do you feel that Moore should get uh, some kind of restitution for Bertuzzi's actions that happened a decade ago? It's tough. It but is tough, especially in, in Steve's situation where he wasn't a top-end player. He didn't have a guaranteed, uh, a, a long, yeah. lengthy contract. Uh, it, was a, it was definitely a sucker punch and, and ha has definitely ended his career. So from a financial perspective, I can, I can see where he's coming from. I, I just, the, the sad part is it will open up a can of worms in terms of more people yeah. venturing down this road. Uh, in the future, and it could if y, uh, player X fights player Y, or then his player Y gets hurt, then he could sue player X. Not even uh, fighting a hit, you know, yeah. it, it could be a hit, and you blow my knee out, my career's over. Because the window, and we talk about this so many times in this show, the window of opportunity to make your career in the National Hockey League or any professional sports is a short one. So all of a sudden, somebody shuts that window on you a little sooner than you like, you got to make your money back somehow, and then thus, uh, lawyer with small print comes in. And uh, yeah, so it, all of a sudden you're going to court, and I hate, I hate in any kind of realm of sports when the court comes into play, and you know yeah, I think it's opened up a whole can of worms, and it's just yeah, I, I don't like that where this could really well go. Yeah, and I think it's also financially it's taken away, but it also took away his the game he lo he loved to play, right? He he loved to play the game, and he his NHL career ended because of mm -hmm. that because of that situation. So I think that also plays into a. In the in the in the play, but he, uh, you know, it's too bad it's come to this, uh, and uh, sounds like they've reached an out of court settlement. But it sounds like there's a little bit of paperwork to do yet to to finish it off. So I don't know if they're out of the woods yet. So, okay, we'll move on to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders now, and they're winning. They've won four games in a row. However, they've done ugly. But it's better to lose or better to win ugly than it is to lose beautifully. Yeah, as uh, Dave Ritchie once said. So I want to ask you this. I know the defense has played extremely well uh, for this team. The offense has been slow. Is that a major concern for you right now that Darian Durant and Messam and company in the backfield uh, can't seem to punch it in the end zone? Absolutely. I'm a huge Rough Rider fan, and obviously they're going to probably win again. But uh, uh, anyway, I, 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 it is concerning. It's, it's good that the defense is holding them in. and they, uh, the one John Check has been phenomenal. Yep. Yes, absolutely. Like he's and been great. The one thing is they have been playing a lot of the Eastern Eastern Division, which is by far the we, uh, the weaker of the two. I think the top place team is three and three and five or three and six. So that's one thing. Hopefully the defense can hold it as they start playing some of these Western opponents. But I think it's a receiving core that uh, they seem to be dropping a lot of balls. They're not getting open. Durant hasn't been great himself, but uh, obviously they miss sheets. Uh, in a perfect world, he gets cut by the Raiders and and he's back, but I don't think that's, uh, I wouldn't be counting on that. Well, so, Jerome Messam has done well when yep, it came to absolutely. eating the clock. I'll give him that. But it just seems whenever in their red zone, they can't seem to complete that, get that Well, I know I, I missed the game on Saturday. I was at the Wagons, but then I had a chance to watch it last night. And it was a great game because uh, it put me asleep like that. Uh, boring game, terrible game. The, the thing is, I'm a Riders fan, but don't get me wrong, but I almost think that it's better off for them to lose these games than to win them. Because right now we're doing it with smoke and mirrors. And we're thinking, oh, we're, we're okay. We, we, we won some games in a row. We're, we're... No, you're not. You're a horrible football club right now. You're well, passing on for offense. Under... On but, offense. But you're passing... Defense has been great. Defense, defense, defense was great. the reason why they won but, in Winnipeg. But, but they're in defense for... was the reason why they won against Montreal. Your defense has been solid throughout the season. Maybe one lapse or two. But the offense, I can understand being a major yeah, concern. Defense, I think they, it's better they, to win those ugly games because those are character wins. But if your offense can't put up any points, Greg. But the thing is, if you're learning from your losses, that's one thing. But if you keep on making those same mistakes offensively and you continue along here, you're not improving yourself as a club. The only time that you really learn your lessons when you lose. You learn more lessons when you lose than when you win. When you win, you're doing the smoke and mirrors and you think everything's fine. I've done this with my club. We get on the bus, we just won an ugly game on the road, and you're thinking everything's fine. And you know deep in your mind, 
oh, we're not very good right now. And the riders know right now, deep in their mind, they're not very good, and they're in for a rude awakening in Vancouver on Sunday. Okay, Phil Simms, uh, this is an interesting one. Of course, CBS broadcaster, probably one of the best in the NFL, has uh, come out and said he is not going to say the Redskins' name. Now, CBS doing the Thursday night football games, and on September 11th, the Washington Redskins are playing. He says he'll refer to them as Washington, but won't refer to the team name. Now, does that say anything in terms of a silent protest? Do you guys don't mind this? Because CBC, or CBS rather, said, you know what, we have no problem if he doesn't want to do that. We have our graphics, we're going to do what we have to do because it's league obligated. Outside of that, if the commentators want to say the name, they do. If they don't, that's fine too. So what do you guys say about Phil Simms, I guess, silent protest? Yeah, I think this is a tough one. I think it's personal opinion or personal preference. Uh, you know, it's a, it's obviously a big a big thing down in the States and uh, even from, a, I think they've got uh, one of the uh, groups of uh, well even in uh, Saskatoon for example the Bedford yeah. Road Redmen changed yeah. their name to the Red Hawks yes. yeah. uh, not too long ago just uh, yeah. in the past summer so that you're starting to see a shift yeah. like a, a team name like Redskins does have an uh, you could argue yeah. has a negative connotation yeah. so uh, I personally say it's under someone's opinion if they want to refer to them as the skins then so be it but he doesn't I think that's perfectly fine yeah it, it's you know the politically correct thing right now our society is, is getting a little bit overblown. I, I know I grew up in Regina, had a school in Regina called the Belfer Redmond. They changed their name. And it's all a person's a personal opinion, but a lot of people's personal opinion is getting pushed on to everybody in our society right now. And uh, you're almost to a point where you better be in or else they're gonna think negative of you. That's like the NCAA. Uh, very quickly, uh, Johnny Manziel. Uh, had a poor showing on Monday Night Football, so too did Brian Hoyer. Do you take anything out of last night's game with Cleveland and Washington from the quarterback perspective for Cleveland? Well, I, th I think he, you know, of the two, as bad as both of them played, he probably played a little bit better than Hoyer. They seemed to get a little bit more going with him there. Uh, I think the challenge is, is uh, uh, I think they got to play him. I think if they're going to start fresh and they're going to start right from scratch, I think they play him right from the start, get him, get his feet wet. Why wait three, four games into the season to, to, uh, to make it happen? I, I think they got to get good. John Gruden said it last night on the broadcast that, you know, if, if they're going to play him, they got to play him. If they're going to start, uh, I don't think Cleveland's going to win the Super Bowl. So they might as well get him going now and get, uh, get, get in there. So there's so much hype around this guy that I think it's, uh, it's overblown. It's, uh, I uh, didn't help. He gave the other team the finger last <laughs> night across the field. <laughs> yeah. um, that's I, I a don't little think classy. that helped, but yeah. that's. Uh, I think they got to play him and uh, and see where it goes. Overblown is probably an understatement. I'm sick of him. I'm sick of uh, Cleveland. I'm sick of Johnny Football every time. It's not like they do these stories on the NFL, the Toronto Sports Network, and they they only profile the Cleveland Browns. You think that this team is going to go a Super Bowl contender. They're far from it. And Johnny Football has so much hype that you think he's the next superstar in the NFL, and he can't even be beat out a second-string quarterback for the number one job in Cleveland. I think there's too much hype. I'm tired of it. I'm sick of it, and I'm turning the channel. It's only been a few snaps. It's only been two preseason game, <laughs> games. Just relax. All right, well, Greg takes a breather. We are doing the same. <laughs> we'll have over-under next.